Welcome friends to another r slash am I the jerk video. You ever take a seat somewhere, somebody asks if they can have it, and you don't want to give it up? We got a story that allows us to be the judge on whether or not that person is a jerk. But first, a story by Minty346. Am I the jerk for telling my therapist lies because I suspected she was telling my husband what I was telling her during our sessions? I started seeing a therapist six months ago because I had postpartum depression. At first, she really helped me. But then I noticed on two occasions, my husband mentioned things that I hadn't told him, but I had confided in my therapist. Since I had no proof and I didn't want to accuse either of them, I decided to tell my therapist lies that I knew he would confront me on if he heard them to see if I was being delusional or not. The more I lied to her, the more suspicious I became too since even things that made my husband look awful was challenged by her and twisted to make him look good. It took a while for him to confront me but he did. At first he never believed I was lying during those sessions, but when I finally convinced him I was, he was still furious at me. He said he only wanted to make sure I was okay and he hadn't been using the therapist to spy on me. Am I the jerk? Would you guys agree with me when I say that there is literally no way possible in this story that OP could be the jerk? Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Frankly, I smell a lawsuit. Our next story is by FitoRA579751. Am I the jerk for driving my daughter-in-law to my daughter's wedding despite my son's disapproval? My daughter-in-law was a stay-at-home mom with two kids. My son is the breadwinner. From what I understand, he puts childcare and other responsibilities upon her using the I'm the money maker excuse. I noticed she hadn't tagged along with him in any visit for a while. My daughter's wedding was days ago. I asked my son if his wife was coming with him, but he said no. My daughter's wedding was days ago. I asked my son if his wife was coming with him, but he said no. I got mad and told him to let her come, but he said it was her decision and she said she was too busy. But I called her and she said she wanted to come, but he told her to stay home with the kids and no babysitter. I had enough, but I waited till the day of the wedding and brought a trusted babysitter to stay with the kids and took my daughter-in-law with me to the wedding. We got there in my car and when my son saw us, he angrily asked what she was doing there. I told him to back off, she's with me. He said I shouldn't have brought her. I told him his behavior was unhinged towards his kid's mom. He berated me saying that I'm getting involved in his marriage, but I'm not. He ended up leaving the wedding and going to a bar. He called later saying I ruined his night by doing what I did and said I'm enabling his wife's attitude and should be helping him enforce boundaries with her. He expects me to apologize and my husband is backing him up saying I overstepped. Am I the jerk? Did I overstep? I literally don't see how OP could be considered a jerk here. OP's son apparently just wants autonomy and what their partner can and can't do where they can and can't go. I mean, maybe we're missing some information here, but if we're not, then that son is really stuck in some 1950s fantasy. Also, based off his reaction, I would almost be scared to let the daughter-in-law be alone with OP's son after that point. Our next story is by Fitoaway, sister-in-law 997. Am I the jerk for not letting my sister-in-law see my kids? after she showed them a picture of my husband in the ICU. I, female, 35, have been married to my husband, male, 32, for eight years. He has one sister, female, 23, who's the only living member of his family. He became like a parental figure for her after their parents' death. She used to live with us, but once she got in college, she started living on her own. All I can say is she's so attached to her brother, but disagrees with me and criticizes me on every turn. She also roll streams over my decisions when it comes to the kids, female 4 and male 2, but I did my best to be patient. My husband got into a serious car accident and had multiple surgeries. It was horrific and I kept worrying about the kids since they kept asking about daddy. I told them that he's injured and is recovering. I didn't take them to the hospital to see him because it wasn't appropriate for their age to see him like this. Sister-in-law had a different opinion and pushed for them to see him, but stopped once I told her to. Two days ago, I had her stay with the kids while I went to the pharmacy store. I returned and the kids were crying. I asked her what's going on and she told me she was just showing the kids a picture of their daddy since they missed him and they freaked out suddenly. I demanded to see the picture and it was a close picture of my husband's face while in the ICU. Now I had no idea how she got there or how she took the photo, but it was too upsetting to show to kids their age. 
I blew up on her and said that she was out of line to do this to the kids. She said the kids kept saying they missed daddy and wanted to see them. I replied that it was inappropriate and she should have told me. I then told her she is no longer allowed to see the kids after causing them emotional distress. Now they won't even eat. She threw a fit saying I'm looking for excuses to keep her away and threatened to tell her brother about my horrid treatment towards her. I had her leave my house, but she hasn't stopped complaining about what I said, saying I'm cruel and difficult. It's honestly quite impressive how little social awareness and understanding of situations that a 23-year-old has. Imagine not being able to understand that a 4-year-old might get traumatized by seeing their father in an ICU. There's just, like, so little rational thought being expressed there. Of course the kids want to see their dad, but they're 4 years old, they're not expecting to see him hooked up to machines and in any kind of critical condition. I think Opie's definitely not the jerk. Just impressively bad thinking from the sister here. Our next story is from Missing Ring. Am I the jerk for kicking my brother and his family out after his son stole my engagement ring? The reason I, 26 year old male, know is because I literally caught him in my room going through my things. And it's on freaking camera. My nephew is 9 and has a habit of stealing things. They've gotten in trouble a few times at stores because he'd leave with something in his pockets. But of course, because he's a kid, they usually just say he forgot he had it. Even at school, my brothers told me they'd had to come talk to the principal on a couple of occasions. Doesn't seem like they've done anything to stop it. They had to come stay here with me because my brother lost his job and they weren't going to make it with all of their bills including rent. He's doing Uber right now while he searches for a job and they can move out. I didn't want to because of my nephew specifically, but family is family, I guess. A month ago, I finally bought an engagement ring for my girlfriend that I was planning on proposing to soon, but now I don't know. It's a $4,000 ring that I spent over a year saving up for. It's been hidden in my room under one of my drawers. One time when I found him snooping in my room, I told my brother to control his darn kid, then got one of those cheap spy cams in my room just in case. Then last week, I noticed it was out of its box. After checking the cam, it showed he was in there again when I wasn't home. My brother and his wife have yelled at him. He says he left it by the TV in the guest room, but it's not there. They look through all their stuff and his too. I know for a fact he's lying about not having it, because that's the same thing he said about one of my watches he took, then ended up finding it. By the second day, my brother tells me they can't find it at all. And I told them, either they find the ring or he repays me the $4,000 I spent on it. If not, they can't stay here anymore. My brother got really upset. He told me I know how their situation is right now. And yeah, it's a tough spot, but I couldn't ignore the fact that his kid, he can't parent, took something extremely important to me that costed a lot of time and money. They were given a week to leave my house if they don't find the ring. They're having to stay at a cheap motel, but my brother won't stop begging to come back because what they're paying right now each night is coming directly out of their savings. He won't stop calling me heartless about letting something like this come between helping them out through a difficult time and my nephew keeps saying he's sorry. It's just hard right now to want them around. Don't even know what to do about the ring and every time I think about it, it just makes me so mad that it's hard to care about their situation. Does that make me a jerk? I don't blame OP and I can't really make them the jerk. When somebody's kid, whose family you're already allowing to stay in your place free of charge, goes and steals the one thing you have been saving all your money up for, meant so much to you, and then they try to pass it off as a oops sorry type thing. Like yeah, they looked around for it, but your kid stole a $4,000 ring and now it's just gone. Forgiving an oh oops type situation like that I don't think is an option. Frankly, for all you know, they might have gone and sold the ring. Or the kid might have went and flushed it down the toilet, I guess you'll never really know. By the way, if you're enjoying these stories, make sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons down below so you never miss any of my daily videos. We cover tons of hard-hitting stories, like this next one from Weird Club 5809 Am I the jerk for telling a guy he's appropriating a culture that isn't his? I've, 20 year old male, been living in the US for some months for an exchange program. I'm Italian. A girl told me she has an Italian friend and that I should meet him. I immediately agreed. It'd be cool to have someone I can speak Italian with while I'm here. I can assure you that speaking another language 24 hours is tiring. 
So we all, a group of six, go hang out with this guy, Adam, and the first thing I noticed was his perfect accent. I complimented him on it and asked if maybe he grew up here. He said that yes, he grew up in the US. After that, we talked about a lot of things. The Italian subject didn't really come out. Two days after, I hang out with him again, but this time it's just two of my friends and three new people they brought with them. Adam introduced himself by saying that he's Italian and sorry if I sometimes use Italian words. They were very impressed and asked him to tell them more. He pointed out I was Italian too and then started bragging about it. He told them how his great-grandparents were Italian. You heard me, great-grandparents. And that he spent the summer in Italy every year in his great-grandparents' old house and learned Italian to honor his culture. I wasn't going to say anything until he said, OP understands what it means to be of a different culture. I'm sorry, what? I told him he isn't Italian. Maybe I did come off harsh, but I said that spending the summer in Italy and learning the language don't make him Italian. Just because he has some far relative that was Italian doesn't mean he is. He's American. His parents are American. He has nothing to do with Italian culture. After that, he got really upset and embarrassed and said that I'm unfairly invalidating his heritage just because I consider myself pure. Then he went away and we all went home. On the way home, the two mutual friends with us told me that I was rude and that it's not my place to invalidate someone's roots. I admit I sounded mean, but I stand my point. He's not Italian. He shouldn't go around telling people he is. Am I the jerk? Was this guy overselling how Italian he was and how his experiences varied? Quite possibly. Is OP still a jerk for literally trying to invalidate their heritage? That especially this guy is very clearly proud of? I think so. He legitimately has Italian lineage. He goes to Italy every single year. He's grown up being told Italian is part of his blood. They can speak the language. How is he just American, pure American, and nothing to do with Italian culture? Maybe it seems too Americanized for OP, but I feel like it's pretty clear that he's through and through Italian. Our next story is by Illustrious Shine 297 Am I the jerk for sneaking a look at a girl's notes? I'm 29-year-old male. Girl in question is in her 20s, maybe 26 or 27. I live in a college town, and there's this restaurant slash bar near campus that I really like. A few years back, this girl worked there as a hostess and I'd see her all the time. She's super hot and I'll admit I used to go in and hope to see her. She now doesn't work there anymore, but sometimes she'll come get lunch and a drink at the bar and work on her computer. The times I've been there at the same time, I've struck up friendly conversation but she mostly gives short answers and kind of ignores me. She's a grad student and is working on her dissertation, so she's writing a lot while she's there. Her and the bartender are good friends too, which is relevant. Yesterday, we were both at the bar again, and I tried to make small talk, but she mostly went back to writing. So at one point, she gets up to go to the bathroom, and I slid over to her chair and took a peek at her notebook next to her computer. She left both open, but the computer had already gone into sleep mode. She's writing on a somewhat current event. Not anything that's like major on the news every day, but something that a lot of people are aware of. She came back. I gave it a few minutes and brought up to both her and the bartender that I saw a cool John Oliver show on the topic she was writing on without mentioning I knew she was writing on it. She just said, yeah, it's a good one and kept working. I tried asking her more about her what her thoughts were, but she just said she needed to keep working. I then saw the bartender go over to her at the end of the bar and they spoke quietly before the girl gave me a strange look and started backing her things up to move out to the patio. I asked her why she was moving, and she said she wanted to work in peace without anyone creeping on her notes. I sort of laughed nervously and made a half joke to the bartender, who just said, You're just lucky I didn't ask you to leave. I really wasn't trying to be creepy, just wanted to start conversation. But both of them called me creepy, and now I'm wondering if I'm the jerk, or if this girl was just being uptight. Admittedly, I think it's weird to be in a bar, regardless of how full it is, and leave your stuff unattended like that. That said, I think OP's definitely the jerk and does come off particularly creepy for when this girl goes off to the bathroom, sliding in and looking through their notebook, even if it's open, and just like hanging around and clearly she's not very into OP, or at least they don't want to like talk, they're there to work, right? Just let the girl be and do her work. This next story is by Whip Lauder. 
Am I the jerk for threatening to tell my child the truth if her mom doesn't compromise on the custody agreement? Kinda at my wits end, so I need a verdict, and I know this probably isn't the place, but I don't know what else to do. So I, 39 year old male, have a daughter with my ex-wife Erin. Me and Erin met at 22, married and had our daughter, 14 year old female, when we were 25. Things were good until my daughter came and then it got bad. Erin decided that she didn't want to work anymore. I told her I didn't want to stay at home wife. Money became an issue and when our daughter was 4, we divorced. This was after Erin admitted to cheating on me multiple times. And then when I refused to do couples counseling, she went for full custody using her dad's money. It was a brutal divorce and custody fight, but I didn't allow Aaron's dad to screw me and I got 50-50. So once I became a single dad, I struggled. Aaron's friend Caroline knew about the divorce and started coming over to check up on me and my daughter. Caroline was one of Aaron's bridesmaids in our wedding. Well, we got close and we've been together for 7 years now. My daughter and Caroline love each other and they formed a close bond over Caroline's pursuit of her masters of education. Daughter wants to be a teacher. My daughter and her will stay up together doing homework and helping each other. I think it's been a great example for my daughter. So Caroline's graduation is this May, but as soon as we saw the date, we knew it was Aaron's weekend. We have tried everything to compromise to make sure my daughter's there. We offered extra weeks. We offered to pick her up and drop her off the same day. We offer we even offered a month of custody for one evening. Aaron is refusing. It's too late to go to the courts for a temporary order, and they wouldn't grant one anyway. My daughter wants to go, and Caroline wants her there. We've been telling our daughter that the custody agreement is the reason she can't go, but I have one chip left to play. I've never discussed any details of our divorce to my daughter. But I told Aaron yesterday that I will go into full detail with everything if she doesn't compromise. She asked me to please not do this. Aaron and my daughter have that tense relationship that every teenage girl and their mom have. But Aaron said she isn't budging on it. I know our daughter's getting close to the age the courts would allow her to choose where she wants to live. And I think my ex knows this would push my daughter over here full time. Caroline's supportive of whatever I decide to do but thinks I've protected my ex a long time and maybe it's time to push the chips in the middle. I told Aaron today, it's simple. Let our daughter come or we aren't protecting you anymore. She's calling me a jerk and a bully. Am I the jerk? I'm gonna say both sides are jerks here. It's pretty clear that Aaron's being a jerk for not letting the kid go to an event that's special to them that they specifically want to go to. And I think OP's being a jerk for the blackmail stuff and just trying to use their kid as like a weapon thing and the threat of burdening them with all of the nasty details of the divorce to get one over. What do you guys think? Who's the jerk in the situation? Let me know in the comments down below. Our next story is by RJP Vecchio. Am I the jerk? My best friend got attested on some very serious charges. His family wants me to sign documents making me legally responsible for over 80,000 if he violates the terms of his bail. So I, 39 year old male, have a best friend, 38 year old male. He's always been there for me and is one of the very few people I consider a friend and the only I consider a brother. We've been friends for about 20 years. Recently, he got arrested for selling mushrooms, a class A felony that carries about 25 years in prison from what I understand. He's a very kind and considerate person who absolutely does not belong in jail. Upon finding out, I've been talking to his mother and his longtime girlfriend, trying to figure out how to post bail and get him out of jail. His bail is set at 80000 and there's no possibility of raising that money between the three of us. Initially, it was proposed for me to put in $1,280 to make up the rest of the 5k non-refundable bond, the rest of which was made up by my friend's mom selling his boat and an old box truck. She was going to put up his house as collateral for the rest of the bond to secure his release. After I gave her, the mother, the $1,280, she informed me that the Bales Bonds Company would not accept the house as collateral, as he was behind on the mortgage and it was necessary to put up another 5k. After much deliberation, as this was a very large portion of the money I had left, and I was just getting laid off from my job, I work construction for a union, layoffs are common and another job will come by soon, but this money was my safety net, I decided to put up the money. 
But now they're telling me that putting up the $6,280 isn't enough either. And they want me to sign a 29-page legal document that basically states that in the event that he does not show up to court, which I have no doubt that he will, or fails to check in with the bond company once a week and after every court date, or gets arrested for any reason whatsoever besides a minor traffic violation, as well as some other minor stipulations, that I would be solely responsible and illegally obligated to pay the bond company 80000 plus 9% interest, plus 25% lawyer fees, plus filing fees, plus investigation fees, etc., I was told that I would be a co-signer along with three other people, but the legal documents I received do not reflect that. The three people that did agree to sign are his father, his longtime girlfriend, and a friend of his. From what I understand, his mother raised $3,720 by selling his boat and an old truck. So no one's put up any of their own money besides myself, and no one's offered their home as collateral, which would negate the necessity of signing these documents. I rent, so I don't own a home to be put up as collateral myself, but his mother and her husband own a home, as does his father. The girlfriend and mother are pressuring me to sign the documents, stating that there is no one else that can sign, and it's no big deal because he'll show up to court. I would be completely and utterly ruined if he were to violate the terms of his release for any reason, not all of which are even in his control. Am I the jerk for refusing to sign these documents? I'm going to be honest, asking you to be legally responsible for $80,000 when you don't have nearly that much money, it's a little bit too much to ask of somebody even if your brother is in jail. I think OP is definitely not the jerk. This next story is by Sam I am 3307 Am I the jerk for hoarding my grief? I recently lost my 12 year old son. His death has shocked us all, and of course his father and I are trying to come to terms and take care of our three girls who are of course struggling. My best friend, who we'll call Dana, and her family have been grieving hard as well. We've been in each other's lives since before the kids came into the picture, and she was pregnant with her daughter at the same time I was pregnant with my son. They were really close, best of friends. Since his death, the daughter who we'll call Lily has been obsessed with the idea that it was her fault. I took her aside and talked to her, reassuring her as best as I can that she was not to blame. It was a tragic accident as he was riding his bike home from her house. At the funeral, my friend asked me to reassure her again that we didn't blame her, and I made sure to do so. My husband did as well. Some days, the only reason I'm functional is I have other children who need me to be and need me to show them how to grieve healthy, and that we love them and are happy they're here no matter what. My friend has taken that to mean that I'm doing great even though I'm not, and I've told her as much. She ignores that though and calls me a few times a week to reassure her daughter again that I don't blame her and that we all love her. I did for a few weeks, but I just can't anymore. I can't keep going through his death with her and soothing her. A lot of days it takes all my energy soothing my own kids. I went the immature route and avoided her calls for a little bit, but knowing that wasn't right, I finally told Dana, if Lily truly believes herself to be blamed, therapy may be her best avenue so she can work towards healing. Dana lost it and told me that we aren't the only ones grieving him and she would think I understood children's needs come before adults and put aside my grief for a brief phone call every few nights. She said I'm hoarding my grief and making it seem like my family's the only one hurting. I hung up on her and haven't spoken to her since. But she's right that the phone calls aren't long and she's a child while I'm an adult. So am I the jerk? Should I have just sucked it up and continued these conversations? I think OP is definitely not the jerk, and while it's a very nice thing to be able to do that for somebody else and reassure them, there's a limit to it, right? And I think OP's suggestion of therapy is very legitimate, and not something to get self-conscious about or worked up about, like how maybe the kid's parent is actually taking it. Our next story is by Mocha Frappuccino 123 Am I the jerk for refusing to apologize to my aunt? Last weekend, I, 19-year-old female, was at our family house for the weekend. It's about a 5-hour drive from my apartment and university, so I visit on weekends when I can. That same weekend, my mom's older sister also visited, and she brought her kid, my cousin, 9-year-old female. So that afternoon, while my mom and her sister were catching up over drinks, I was in my room playing Animal Crossing. My cousin wanted to come in, so she started knocking. I refused to let her in, so she started banging on the door. 
I yelled over loud sounds that I was busy and she can't come in. The banging stopped, but a few minutes later I heard a knock on the door, and then I heard my aunt's voice asking if I could let my cousin in my room and look after her so she wouldn't bother them while she and my mom were chatting. Feeling defeated, I let my cousin in and she had a smug look. She had her iPad with her, so I thought she wouldn't bother me. I pointed to where she can sit, told her not to touch anything, and went back to my game. A few minutes later, she's asking if she can play my game. I told her no. I bought my Switch and my game using my hard-earned money working part-time with a bit of allowance that I saved. I wasn't going to let some kid borrow it and risk dropping it or something. When I refused, she started screaming and crying and tried to grab the Switch. She managed to grab it, but then dropped it. Luckily, it didn't break because the height it fell from was low. I got mad at her and told her to get out of my room. My cousin then ran to her mom and my mom and told them that I was being mean to her and won't let her borrow my Switch. My aunt asked me if I could let my cousin play, and I said no, and my cousin continued screaming. My aunt then started yelling at me for making my cousin cry and for being selfish. I was so fed up that I told her, yelling over my cousin screaming, that it's not my job to babysit the brat and that I have the right to refuse to let her borrow my Switch. My cousin wouldn't stop crying and screaming, so my aunt decided to cut the visit short and leave right then and there. That night, my mom told me to apologize to my aunt because she called and said she felt disrespected by me. She also wanted me to apologize for my cousin for calling her a brat. She said that she would not visit again unless I apologize, that I should not be forced to look after my cousin and that I should not be obligated to let anyone borrow my stuff. Now my mom wouldn't talk to me because I was being unreasonable. Am I the jerk? I think OP's definitely not the jerk. They bought the Switch in the game themselves, they don't have to share it. And frankly, rewarding that bratty behavior is such a bad thing to do anyways. And our final story of the day is by Waste Isopod 3368 Am I the jerk for demanding someone's seat and getting them fired? At short notice, I had to get a train with my two young children, one and three. I booked us tickets with assigned seats and packed plenty of distractions for them. When the train arrived, it was clearly overcrowded and our seats were taken by a couple in business attire and company lanyards. They covered the seats next to them, four in a square around the table, with their bags, and clearly weren't intending to move. I asked them if they were in the wrong seats and was ignored. I raised my voice slightly and asked them to check they were in the right seats as I'd booked them, three seats total. I was told to buzz off back to my deadbeat baby daddy. I was furious. Luckily, another passenger alerted a train guard who removed them from the carriage after a lot of back and forth, insults, and threats towards myself and my children. I was very shaken up, but a number of passengers offered support, made my children laugh, and said they'd keep an eye on us. During the journey, a passenger insisted I should have the video he had taken of the altercation. Another passenger provided the names and company information of the two people displayed on their lanyards, Multiple people recommended I follow up with an email to their company and offer to be witnesses. I didn't do this then. After speaking to my husband, I emailed the company with a full explanation of what happened and asked they speak with their employees. In their reply, they said that I was one of a number of people emailing about this incident with video evidence and witness accounts. They had already suspended the employees and that now I, as the victim had emailed, they would be terminated immediately in line with company policy. I felt awful. I never expected them to lose their jobs and felt shell-shocked. My husband called it jerk karma, but several friends think that I should never have reported them and told the other passengers not to either. Am I the jerk for getting them fired? Even though it wasn't OP's intention, I don't think they're a jerk for getting these people fired. They're terrible, scummy people that were willing to try to take your seat, block a couple of the seats from other people, and then also curse at you and kids and just totally disrespect you. You just can't really feel bad for these people at all. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. So of all these stories I've read today, which is your favorite and why? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you haven't yet, if you could like and subscribe, that would mean a lot to me. Whatever you do, whether it's liking, subscribing, turning notifications on, all of it helps grow this channel and I appreciate the heck out of it. So until next time, I'll see you all tomorrow with some more stories.